Oh, by the way, before I start, I want to show you these. I've been collecting movie ticket subs since I was uh, since I was uh, eight, uh, ten years oh, old. Oh, how cool is that? And The Rock and Con Air were in my collection. Look at the price. That's of so awesome. <laughs> Do this, you want to keep one? No, 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 no. I want you to have these. They're important to me that you have them, but. <laughs> I mean, that is the golden age of my career right there. Yeah, no, you're still the golden no, age, man. No, well, thank you. No, love that's you, man. awesome. Thank you. Um, all right, well, I have to say, I love in the beginning with the montage and of, of all the families that don't make it, and the Croods obviously survive. So right. think about this prehistoric time period. If two of your previous characters were dropped into that world, which one do you think would have the best survival skills? Which one do you think would die out immediately? Um, uh, that requires a bit of time and thought, but I know the one that, that I would want to see in that world. Which one? Is Peter Lowe from Vampire's Kiss. Yes. That would be okay. <laughs> Just going nuts thinking he's a vampire <laughs> in that world. Um, I, I think that uh, Stanley Goodspeed from The Rock would probably survive because he's smart and, he's, uh, and intelligence is really what you need to survive. Castor Troy? Uh, no. <laughs> he, he, I think he would try to bite like, uh, like a saber-toothed cat or something and get bit back and die right away. Or a peach. You have a peach with yeah, him the whole time. Yeah, or a peach. Yeah. Well, he, he would enjoy it for a little while. He'd find a peach from that time, an abstract, prehistoric peach, like like from the Avatar or something, and eat it. Yeah, that would be good. I'd like to see that. Oh, he said too. I love this. <laughs> yeah. Based off on the cruise. Yeah. You gotta combine those two movies. Yeah. I love the whole concept of your character. He... <clears throat> Fear. He is so scared of change. He hates change. Yeah. He wants to stay the same. He, and, oh, oh well, I like that. It was very yeah. cool. So he, he's just scared to evolve. Right. So I want to ask you, as an actor, looking at your career, what was the biggest change you faced and that you were scared about evolving as an actor? Oh, the, the thing is, I keep trying to explore and be eclectic and reinvent myself, if you will, which means that I have to do movies that maybe not everyone's going to understand why. Mm -hmm. For example, I went through a horror phase because I had done plenty of dramatic movies, I had done plenty of comedies, hadn't done horror, time to go and see what Vincent Price and Christopher Lee got up to, uh, the old Hammer horror film. So I, I did Season of the Witch, Drive Angry, Ghost Riders 1 and 2, uh, Wicker Man, and I was trying to like explore those kinds of movies and that was a bit of a challenge mm -hmm. and a bit scary at times because I knew I was taking a chance that would probably piss a lot of critics off. But I enjoyed it and I'm happy with the results. Now, I think you have achieved some kind of interesting balance here because I'll watch an animated movie and I'll hear an actor's voice and I'll be distracted and go, I can't connect to the character because I recognize that actor's voice. But for some reason, I, know, I knew you were in the role but I was able to completely separate myself and enjoy the character without thinking about Nicolas Cage doing the voice. Where is that balance? Is that something you consciously think about? You don't want people to think about you because you're behind an animated character? That's interesting. Somebody even said that they didn't know it was me at first because mm. the voice sounded different. I don't really know what, what the reason for that is. Uh, I think it's just perhaps that part of me is a cartoon. You know? mm. I mean, I've all, often been comfortable with the idea of approaching characters almost like a car an animated character. Well, Raising Arizona comes to mind. I was often thinking about like Woody Woodpecker and the hair and the, the behavior and I did uh, Peggy Sue Got Married I was channeling the voice of Pokey from the Gumby Show. Yeah. So maybe that's it. Maybe it's because I've often had a bit of animated aura to the work I've done in live action. Call the Coen Brothers up and get them to do an animated movie. That would be <laughs> that would be amazing. That's a good idea. That's a really good yeah. idea. Now, I love the whole concept of surviving yeah. and living. Yeah. It's two completely different things. Exactly. As an actor, what is the difference between being a surviving actor and a living actor? A living actor is someone who who wants to try new things and take chances and, and explore and stay interested. A surviving actor is one who's just making movies for the money. Mm. Well, congratulations to you. You're definitely a living actor. Thank you. Pleasure Thank talking you. to you. It's an honor, honor.